file reader and buffered reader. My name is Kayla Blanton. Real world problem. A teacher needs to calculate a single student's average in her class to see if he is failing. The teacher already has all of the grades saved in a file and doesn't want to type them into the program in case she might make an, an error. Below are examples of a text file, grades.txt, with all of the grades inputted into it. And to the right is an example of the output and a message dialog box. Advantages to using file input and output, also known as file I.O. Programs lacking this structure require data to be re-entered each time the program runs. Data is stored in RAM, random access memory, and disappears at the program's completion. The process goes as follows. One, the file is open, creating connection with the program. Two, data is written to or read from the file. Three, file is closed, terminating the connection between the program and the file. To use file reader and buffered reader, pass a file reader object to a buffered reader object. The file reader opens an existing file to associate the file on the disk with an object declared in the class. Buffered reader allows you to read entire lines from a file via the method readLine. Below is an example of how you would declare a file reader object, pass to it a text file, declare a buffered reader object, and pass to it the file reader object. The readLine method. It reads consecutive lines with no additional prompting. It returns lines as strings. However, data must be parsed to change the variable type. An example of this would be to use integer.parsent of string str or other parsing methods. Readline detects the end of the file when it returns null. Adding a throws clause. A program throws an exception when an unexpected error occurs. When the error occurs, the executing method must deal with it or throw it again. Writing throws IO exception allows exceptions of the type IO exception to be thrown. Below shows the placement of IO exception in your Java program. The example here places it immediately after the main method. If an error occurs, the method will suspend normal execution. The JGrasp throws error. Referencing a file that does not exist, such as grades1.txt, creates this error message. Using a loop to reach file end. First, we must initialize input with input equals nfile.readline. This reads a line from your text file. We also initialize our count to be equal to zero. Then we create a while loop, with the condition being input does not equal null. This means that the while loop will run until there is no more data in the file to be read. We print out the input to make sure that every piece of data from the file is being read. We then parse input to a usable data type by creating a double. We add that grade to total, and then we update the count so we know how much we should divide the total by so we can get the average grade. We then read another line. Solution, the teacher created a program that allowed her to read input from a file. This way, she did not have to retype all of the grades each time she wanted to calculate a student's average. Grades.txt will be our sample input file for our test program. To demonstrate our real-world situation, we have created this file, gradeaverage2.java. We imported java.io so that we can access the methods in buffer reader and file reader. We then declared our main header and included a throws IO exception clause. We declared our variable. We then declared a file reader object freader and passed grades.txt to it. We then declared in file, which is a buffered reader object, and passed that file reader object to it. Now we need to initialize input and total and convert grade to a usable data type. So input equals nfile.readline. Um, and then we'll parse grade. So grade equals double dot parse double parentheses input because that's what we are passing to that method so that we can change grade to a double. 
and now we will print out the grade that we have read in to confirm that this is correct. And our total will now equal grade because we have a single grade in there. This has effectively initialized all of our data. That was not our initialized. So now we need to create a while loop to verify that data exists to be read. So while input does not equal null, and we will need to read the data from the file and add the grades to total. So input equals in file dot read line. And now to have a second check on this data so that um, it won't run if there is no data to run. So if input does not equal null again, we will print the input. And we're going to parse the input again so that we'll have a grade. Passing input to it again. And then now our total will be plus equals grade. And we're also going to increase the count every time. So we're going to say count plus plus. Now to calculate the average, we'll divide total, which was all the grades added together, by count, which was the number of strings that we read from the file. And now we're going to print the average to a dialog box by calling jOptionPane.showMessageDialog. Then we have to close the file. So let's compile this. And it compiled correctly, so now we can run it. So everything worked. Now we would like to run the program again, adding a few more data points to the grades.txt file. And now we'll save the text file. We will run gradeaverage.java again without even having to compile it. And see, it goes through all of the different data points, even the new entries that we just put in, and it still gives us an average.